let's photograph one of our jumping spiders with an autumn theme. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, then click the subscribe button so you don't miss any free content. So in this video, we're going to do an autumn themed jumping spider shoot. So I have my laser Susan. I have a baking tray that we're going to use to build our little macro set onto. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of this moss. We're going to use this as the ground layer. Okay, now this is a moss that you can get from any uh, reptile pet shop. Okay, that will serve as a, as a basis for our ground. I also have some dry moss, which we're going to put down as well. We'll try and blend it in if we can. But the, um, the unique thing, because it's macro photography, we don't have to be that careful with it because you're going to be zoomed in that much that you're not really going to tell what it is. Okay, making a bit of a mess here. So, I want to go outside, get some leaves, okay? And what I found was, I found these, found these nice autumn looking uh, leaves. They're yellowy brown. And I also found some of these fantastic red leaves, which is from a climbing plant. I'm not too sure which one it is. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments. But what I want to do is I want to build this up for background. So I'm going to use the bigger leaves in the background, the red ones in the foreground, and then we're going to place our jumping spider onto our set and start photographing him. So let's build the set up now. So I have those leaves set up. I'm, going to, I'm intending to use those as a background out of blur background uh, subject. We could turn our Lady Susan a little bit just to get a little bit of a better angle if we need to, okay? And then I'm going to use the red leaves as a foreground subject that hopefully we can get our jumping spider to, uh, to interact with. That is my little setup done. We're just gonna leave it like that. Actually, no, I'm going to get some bark in here. Let's just put some bark in here. There we go. And the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to let our jumping spider onto the little set, let him explore around, and as he calms down and gets a little bit slow, we'll start taking some pictures. I don't know what his name is because we haven't named these jumping spiders yet. Let's get him out. As always, being very careful with them. Because they might be pets, but they are still spiders, so you still have to be gentle. I'm going to introduce him now to our macro setup. There he goes. Okay, careful of his, uh, his bungee cord. This spider is a male Philippus regius spider. I hope I got that right. Its common name is a regal jumping spider. And I feel that his green pepper pouch, which are at the front, which are basically where his uh, fangs are, will play off nicely against the red leaves. So that's the uh, setup I'm using at the moment. We have the Canon 650D with the Canon 100mm L series macro lens, the Yongno YN24EX, I always have to read that, I can never remember it, and we have Jason Canning's custom diffuser set on here. 
if you are a regular to this channel, you'll know that when we're photographing these regal jumping spiders, and the best F stop that I like to use is F7.1. I will set my shutter speed to a maximum sync speed, which is 1 200th of a second, and our ISO is going to be 100. Okay, now for the trim macro flash, I'm going to set it to minus 1 on the flash exposure compensation. This flash is going to be set up for full power, and that's going to be set up to come down from the top, so it's going to simulate uh, the daylight. This one is set at 1 8th power and will remain where it is and will fill in some of the shadows. Okay, I'm going to change my, um, my white balance to flash. I'm going to set to autofocus. I think it's the first time I've used an autofocus in this, um, on this YouTube channel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get behind the camera, fire off a series of shots and I'll show those on the screen now. I might get able to get a decent, nice enough background on here. <laughs> What's he gone there? I don't know why, but jumping spiders seem to be attracted to the lights. I don't know why. Okay, he's gone off onto the uh, background now. Unusually, we seem to have gotten a really good picture straight off the start of the uh, photo shoot. But as usual, we're going to let him calm down and uh, see what else we can get. Let's go around here. See where he's going to go. So now he's in a place where I can't reach with the tripod, so we have to take it off the tripod. I'm going to turn on the image stabilization, okay? Turn it off when it's on a tripod, turn it on when you're not on a tripod. Okay, let's see what we can get here. Now this little spider is now on the black background, which obviously we don't want. It's a black spider on a black background. That's going to be hard to photograph. There you go. Because you got you got the camera here, it's heavy on the uh, the front end. You got no grip here, which is very hard. So I'm going to just cut here. I'm going to fit my battery grip onto the camera, and then we'll carry on. So you got all these new cameras coming out that are smaller and smaller, and people are going on about they want smaller cameras. And I think I'm the only one who wants the camera to stay the same size. Because I feel when it's this small, it's too uncomfortable to uh, to use it, especially one-handed. Nice well, back to grip, probably about twenty pound off Amazon. Okay, we already have the um, the tripod mount on there. We're back again. I've swapped my focus into AI servo, so as he's moving around, it'll automatically focus. I'm so used to using manual focus when it comes to macro that to have autofocus, it's, uh, it's very nice. It might spoil me a little bit. So I have my focusing point set to the middle point and I'm just keeping that on, on his head as he's moving around and just taking pictures. Now the 650D I believe it's only got is it nine focusing points? I can't remember off the top of my head. 
The A to D has a lot more, which makes things very easy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the set a little bit smaller because this spider doesn't seem to want to settle down. Now every spider has its different personalities. Now I know that um, Missy, she would settle down and just stand here and let me photograph her. This spider is a little bit more inquisitive. So what I'm going to do is to combat that, I'm going to make the set a little bit smaller. Okay, now that we have the set a little bit smaller, we have the use of the Lazy Susan again. So let's uh, let's put our spider back on there. Not forgetting to break the bungee cord before you pull your hand away. Let's carry on. Now, because we don't have those leaves in the background, I'm going to have to angle it down a little bit. Unless, yeah, we could move the Lazy Susan forward and then try and get these in the background again. Oh, we'll see if that works. Okay, I'm going to turn my image stabilization off. Let's bring the tripod back in. Oh, I cut his leg off. No. Whoa, I almost got him in mid-jump. you believe that? Okay, so that's the end of the photo shoot. I'm sure you'll agree, Buster did a great job on that photo shoot. Very, very different to any other uh, jumping spider we photographed. He's very active, he's jumping around a lot. Which begs the question, can you photograph a jumping spider in mid-jump? Now that might be something we might have to explore over the coming months. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you haven't done already, subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you on the next one, guys.